Okay, we are kicking off live here, back on Facebook Live. Uh, something that's actually <laughs> seems to be the uh, uh, one thing that is consistent for us so far. Uh, apologize again. We tried all day to get on the uh, webinar system, unable to do so. So. We are going to rock and roll here. Make sure everybody can hear me. Hopefully they can. Hey Tom, hey everybody, how you doing? We're going to rock and roll. We're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, I can see everybody uh, saying they can hear me. And so uh, that's always my biggest fear. Let me turn, let, let me turn that off. <laughs> hey, Brenda, how you doing? But it's good to be here. It's good to be back. It's good to be on Wednesday night training once again. Uh, we're going to stay with the beacons, of course. And uh, I know there's uh, been a ton of questions asked this week. We're going to stay with Beacons this week. We're going to stay with Beacons next week. And uh, everything is uh, then on the week after that, we're just going to put everything together from mobile business cards, mobile web apps, to the marketing platform, to texting, to, to, to Beacons, putting together a full plan, uh, a full plan so that you can go out and market these Beacons. I know a lot of people are already selling Beacons. Uh, with uh, the, the Beacon program, uh, but just remember this, and don't forget this. I've had this conversation, gosh, 30 times in the last week. You're still in the mobile app business, okay? Um, you're not, you're not just in the Beacon business. And so you want to make sure that what you do is is you stay focused on where you're at and what you're doing. This is just a small part uh, of what your business is. There's multiple parts to what you do, but this is a part that will help you to grow, number one, trust with your clients, bring new customers to their business, our mobile web app, and uh, most importantly, growing their business so that you have a good residual income coming in uh, for a very, very long time. So make sure that you stay focused exactly where you're at, what you're doing, where you're going, and uh, what your goals are. So we're going to go ahead and get started real quick. Let's get this couple of things out of the way. Uh, if you have not joined our Facebook group, join our Facebook group at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash AWS Mastermind. It's a great place to be. I will build, be building a place tomorrow. Uh, Woodrow met with uh, some, some guys in um, Atlanta. We're actually going to put together a Beacon Mastermind group. We're going to leave the name Beacon off of it so we don't get spammed and everybody starts hitting it. But we're going to come up with a little name. It's going to be specifically for those who are selling beacons or those who want to be a part of that mastermind. There will be people in there contributing, people who are testing the beacons, people who are selling the beacons, people who are doing all the workarounds with the beacons. So we're going to put that together. I will build that tomorrow. I was going to try to get it built today, but just ran out of time. So there will be a, a group that is... Uh, very well versed because they're out doing this on the streets. They're going to be sharing things. We're going to be talking to each other and working with each other and really get down and master this business. I can tell you, it's like I said last week, you are on the ground floor of an absolute explosion that is starting to happen. So 
make sure you join the group. That's a great place to be. Uh, those that want to be a part of the, the uh, Beacon Mastermind, you're, you're welcome to join. I'll be building that page tomorrow, but it's going to be everything Beacons, okay? It'll be a little bit different than this group where Facebook.com forward slash group is for sex plan. Okay, everybody helping each other. The Beacon group is going to be strictly Beacons. Quick. Nor I cannot guarantee just because you are watching training, you will make any sales, create any traffic, or increase your income. Every person is different, has different work ethics, and different desires. Uh, remember, this is a tool in your toolbox and should be used in conjunction with the tools you currently use. All right? This technology is absolutely mind boggling. It's like I said last week, I feel like I'm back in 1849 during the gold rush and we have now brought this beacon technology in uh, with the app wizard studio mobile web apps i'm going to go through real quick i made a video but i want you guys to see it live instead of just on the uh, uh, the slides last week uh, there's no no voice on this video so i'm going to just kind of walk you through it uh, everybody should be able to see, I hope, the, let me see, I may have to share this, I do, give me one second here, I'm trying to share this, Hang on just one second. Whoops, I don't want to do that. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I don't know if my hair is combed. You can see I'm in my new office. I'm so excited about. Here we go. Now, I'm going to walk you through this. There is no volume on this. And uh, but it's but it's really really cool, okay. And you're going to be able to see me actually set up a beacon, and I'm going to talk about it. Then we're going to talk about a couple of other things that I discussed today with Radius Networks and their team. So here you can see the beacon. I'm going to turn it on. You can see the one flash. That means it's on. Then I'm going to hold it down for four seconds, and you can see it flashing. That means it is now in configurable mode. I'm going to go into the Rad Beacon app. I'm going to pull that down. So just take your finger and slide it down. And that is going to bring up the configurable beacon. And you can see it was sitting there flashing. So we're going to go back into the app. And we're going to touch on the app that's there. Now you can see here that it's turned on on iBeacon. You have to have at least one of these activated for it to uh, be configurable. So we're going to turn on the URL. We're going to turn off the iBeacon. We're going to come in and we're going to type in our URL. you got to make sure it's got the HTTPS on it, the colon forward slash forward slash, and, of course, 2tap.mobi forward slash your copy code. You can see I type as slow on my phone as I do on the computer. So, <laughs> yeah, don't get it. And uh, so, but get in there. 66. I talked to Radius Networks today about the calibrated power, and I'm going to go into that a little more after we get off, but just remember that calibrated power, put it to 66. And we're going to talk about this transmit power. The advertising rate was set to minus 5. That means it goes out 5 times a second. Apply the settings. Of course, that's 8 zeros. Hit OK. Now we're going to come in and we're going to lock it, okay? We're going to lock it because we don't want someone else to get uh, access to this and put their beacon information in there. So now it's locked. You can't unlock it by simply powering it down and going through the configuration mode again, okay? Now we're going to come out, and I do a few things to test my beacons. The first thing I do is I go to the physical web app. I make sure that it shows up on the physical web app, and it does right here. 
The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the front of my phone. I'm going to go to my notifications. I want to make sure that it shows up there. Open this, and you can see that it pops up. I've actually got two beacons sitting here by my desk, and I've got three configurations on them that you'll see in just a moment. And then I go into Locate. Locate is an app that you can download from um, Radius Networks, and this actually works out good because my cat's got a hold of my beacons a couple of times, and it helped me find it helped me to find them. But it tells you everything you really need to know about your app. You can see here I've got a UID attached to one of the apps. I've got a UID and the the URL. Okay. Any questions on that, real quick? Yes, the config. Well, you can use a Mac, uh, Mac, uh, MacBook Pro, but it has to have a a Bluetooth dongle for it. You can also have enabled. You can configure them. Okay. And this video in the group uh, I will put some conversation over top of the video tomorrow but then I can't run video and conversation here at the same time any other questions on this particular setup it's pretty simple that was uh, three minutes long and some of the segments were about 20 seconds too long so you can see it sets up pretty quick now let's go in and let's talk about batteries I've had this conversation many times this week okay let's talk about batteries and let's talk about some configurations because how you configure your apps depends on how fast the battery burns up okay in the rad beacon the rad beacon dot the little beacon that I just showed you that I set up the battery life is anywhere from 30 to 285 days 30 to 285 days remember I showed you the transmit power a while ago it was at minus three minus three is the optimal and I'm going to talk about that I'm going to go in depth in that in just a minute with a chart uh, so in order to get the maximum days out of it you want to set your uh, transmit your, your power to an optimal setting okay the five the five transmissions per minute okay means that your beacon is radiating your URL five times a second, all right? And uh, you, that seems like it's really fast, but literally, if you sit there and you look at a second and you, you flip your face five times, is the optimal number, okay? So with three being the optimal number and five being the optimal number, that's going to get you on the red beacon dot up here around this 280 day point. Okay. Now this beacon right here, this is a USB beacon. We all know that USBs are uh, power driven when they are plugged in. So this beacon is forever. Okay. This beacon is forever. And I was even talking to Woodrow today. Uh, you know, you can download the, you can turn your tablets into beacons. So literally, for those of you who are selling the uh, kiosk systems, you can turn those tablets into beacons and they could be radiating from their point of sale system all day long. And you can see here that this one, that means you have to buy in bulk, I think it's about 26 or something like that. Beacon is $14 if you don't buy in bulk. The Rad Beacon X4 is a little heavier duty these use the small what I call watch batteries okay the Rad Beacon 4 actually uses four AA batteries and you get 18 months to 184 months depending on the settings so if you're going into a place and you're going to set up a big campaign and you're going to set up smaller campaigns where you want to move the beacons around often you, you might want to do a combination of both. If it's a smaller store and you're going to put one at the entryway and you're going to put one at the counter and you're not going to move them and you're going to set them up, I would go with the Rad Beacon X4. 
Uh, these are $24 for one, $19 if you buy them in bulk. But this is the way I would go. If I was doing smaller campaigns and you're working uh, with somebody that uh, is wanting to do different things, move them around a lot, maybe uh, trade shows, uh, those kind of things, I would go with the Rad Beacon Dot. They're not going to leave them on all the time. They're just going to use them periodically for trade shows and things like that. I would go with the Rad Beacon Dot. They're small. Stick them right on the table. Get you some Velcro and you're good to go. This is a more permanent. Uh, this Rad Beacon is waterproof. Uh, obviously, it's bigger because it uses four AA batteries. So, but... If you're looking for the bigger campaigns, looking for more uh, more length of battery time, the Rad Beacon X4 is the way to go. Now, I've been asked a thousand times, Kerry, why did you pick Radius Networks? Because Radius Networks is on the cutting edge of every bit of this technology. As a matter of fact, they have developed a lot of the technology in the beacon world with Google. So Radius Network is a big player, and that's the reason I go with Radius Networks. I, I like to team myself up with somebody that's, number one, in the know, in the go, and, and they're on that cutting edge. Uh, matter of fact, Radius uh, Networks is the one who developed Alt Beacon, which is the alternative to iBeacon and will rapidly become the standard for all phones. And Radius Networks is the one that developed that. You're welcome to use any beacon company out there. I don't get paid by Radius. I don't get paid if you buy beacons from Radius. Who you buy your beacons from. Just make sure that they have a configuration app and uh, make sure that they are uh, FCC compliant. Make sure that they follow all the rules for beacons. You can buy them all day long for Alibaba. You've got to be a programmer. You've got to be able to set them up yourself, and you've got to be able to configure them yourself. So if you want to go out and buy a bunch of beacons for 3 or $4, feel free to do it. Make sure that you build your configuration. You've got your APIs, your APKs, and uh, everything down and your program written. So, uh, But you can use whoever you want. The settings, <coughs> excuse me, the settings... You choose for transmission power, an interval will have a large impact on how your beacon network operates. Okay? We were talking just a few minutes ago. Key on battery life. On the rad beacon dot, you want to make sure that the, that the power isn't overbearing. And I'm going to show you in a second what that power means to the radius of the beacon. Choosing the most practical and efficient settings is greatly determined by your specific needs and use. If you've got four beacons, space, maybe a 500 square foot space, and you're working a small business, you're going to want to turn those beacons back because you don't want the radius to cover the whole store. You're probably doing some specific marketing needs for that company. So you don't need to set them at seven and burn your beacon out in 30 days. Okay. And we're going to show you those radiuses in just a moment. We're going to focus on the transmission power only because there are a number of factors to consider when choosing the optimal transmission power setting for your needs. The major things the above settings will affect include signal range. How far, what, what is the radius of that signal? Depending on what the power is, depends on how far signal stability. Somewhat influenced by transmission power, but more so by interval. More so by interval. Now, it may be easy to say I want the best of all three. And you know what? We all want the best of all worlds. We wish we could... Uh, uh, just pick these things up and throw them out there and they last forever they don't okay we wish we could set them to where everything is optimal we can't they are affected by weather they're affected by literally the bricks in the wall they're affected by the metal in the wall they're affected by how thick the walls are there is a lot of effects that have to do with these beacons so you have to plan your campaign exactly what the customer wants maybe you need the rx4 
outside the door because it's waterproof so that it picks up people walking down the sidewalk. You're probably not going to pick up very many people driving at 30 or 40 miles an hour. I'm going to tell you that now. Number one, they're sitting in a car. Number two, uh, if you're in Texas in the summertime, you've got your windows rolled up. And number three, they're, they're, they're probably not going to be in a proximity because the sidewalk is only, what, six to eight feet? So you're not going to want to put the power out there where you're trying to reach plum across the street. You're going to want to catch those people that are walking by that will do what? They will walk in your door. You know, we're, we're not setting up uh, transmitters for television stations. That's what commercials are for. We're setting up small transmitters to influence people that are right close to our business. So we do what? We bring them in the door. Okay, this is transmission power, all right? Transmission power level one. And you can see this is in gray right here. So this is about where you want to be. Level one is four meters or 13 feet. That's the least power. It's going to make the longevity of the battery last a long time. The optimal power is three, okay? That gives you minus 12 uh, decimal value. DMB stands for Digital Multimedia Broadcasting. It's a digital radio transmission technology. Okay. I, I just put that up there because I knew somebody would ask me, hey, Kerry, what's DMB? And that that really that means absolutely nothing to me. <laughs> I could, could, I don't know, but if anybody asks you, hey, what's a DMB? Now you can say, well, that stands for Digital Multimedia Broadcasting. It's a digital radio transmission technology. Okay. Uh, to some tech gurus, and they would probably just jump all over that. But transmission power of three is your optimal setting, 115 foot radius. Okay, that is a long way. What, uh, 10 yards is what? 30 feet? 20 yards is 60 feet? So you've got a, you've got a long way with that optimal radius. Now, maybe you're doing a campaign in the store and you don't want it to go out more than 13 feet. Okay. Now, how many of you have beacons? Let me ask this question real quick. And I, I think this thing goes pretty quick for you guys being able to re reply back. How many of you, how many of you actually have multiple beacons? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, Kitty. That's and, and that's that's exactly right. If you'll notice when you when you have your beacons, and and I watch mine all the time. That's kind of when I know the cat's got one, and playing it for a hockey puck, because I can watch the way my beacons pop up on my phone, which one is the closest, and that's the way beacons work. You walk into a door that's closest to you has the strongest signal. Okay, so as you walk in. If you've got one set at 115 feet and it's at the back of the store at optimal power, it's at the back of the store, and you've got one setting at the front door when you walk in, you're going to receive that notification first. Okay? That's the first notification you're going to receive. Then as you walk in, you're going to get the other notification just shortly thereafter. Mine usually come in, and if you've got multiple beacons, I just challenge you to go out and play with them, put them all over your house like I do. And, and, and uh, see how they pop up on your phone. And you'll see that as you walk through the house and as you do things, that literally it's, it's in order of where they're at. And as you go move away from another and it refreshes, the closest one's at the top. Okay? So any questions on transmission power at all? The 66, I mentioned that in the beginning. I'm not sure what the next slide is here. The 66 that I mentioned in the beginning for calibrating, that calibration, and I, and I clarified this today because I've, I've read about it ever since last Wednesday, that specific calibration is used if you are building the API technology, the connective technology inside the app itself, not the URL. So if you've actually built... Uh, uh, if you've actually built a, a native app and it's triggered by the power and, 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 and the calibration and it matches up, 
you actually put all that information not only in the beacon, but it also is programmed into the app along with the UIDs and all that stuff. And so that calibration, if you will set that at 66, okay, that's the optimal calibration for setting up the beacon. You don't need to set it at minus 35. You don't need to calibrate it. Go get an iPhone. You don't need to do any of that stuff. Put it at 66. And I got that from uh, Radius today. Okay, I, I talked to them today because I wanted full clarification so that when we set these up, we are setting them up for the optimal transmission. Now, Radius Beacon's optimal transmission is five. Okay, five. That's five pulses. That's five URLs going out every single second. Okay, so you've got your, your transmit power of three, your... Um, pulse power set at five, okay, and at five per second, and you've got your calibrated power set at 66. 60, yes, minus 66. Minus 66. I'm sorry, I'm, I, I know everything is minus, I just, that habit of just saying the number, but that is correct, minus 66. Minus 66. So Red Beacon dotted 30 to 285 days. Optimal is what? 3, 5, and 66. The Red Beacon 4, uh, battery life of 18 months to 184 months, depending on the settings. Optimal, 3, 5, and 66. Okay? Uh, real quick, at, at power level 3, you've got a minus 12 value. Okay, which means digital multi-broadcasting and digital radio transmission technology. Okay, you're going to get 20 meters or 115 feet out of that. 230 feet will just about cover every single business you guys are probably working with. All right. Setting up a beacon campaign. The best thing that happened when Eddie Stone launched, and, and I know this for a fact because I can tell you, I started looking at beacons when you had to use Pass Wallet and all that crap, all right? And it was just a pain. It, it, you, you had to use Google Pay. You had to use all those extracurricular apps, and I bypassed it. It, it, was just, it wasn't for me. It was too complicated. People had to download this. You had to download that. Even with iBeacon today, and let me just talk about iBeacon for a moment before I get on with the paragraph. An iBeacon actually interacts with an app that has been programmed specifically to open that a signal. It, it literally can open the app on your phone. Okay, it can literally open the app on your phone. And when that happens, that information is in front of somebody. But it specifically interacts with an app when the signal is transmitted, okay, transmitted, the app receives it, the phone receives it when it comes within range, and that app literally wakes up and says, oh, this, this program is telling me to do something. And so it will literally open that app and go to wherever that app told it to go. With Eddie Stone, you do not need an app. Okay, you don't need to program anything. You don't. Uh, you don't need to uh, go out and hire anybody to do anything. You literally can do this yourself, as we've talked about. Two negative three, but when you slide the bar, you'll see it on the power on the transmit power. Google's new format. Okay, the Eddie Stone format supports both iOS and Android. Supports both iOS and Android. So you can engage with a lot more smart device users out there. Now, let me take the myth off the table right now because I've heard this a thousand and one times. Carrie, if I'm only really reaching out to Android, why would I want to do that? Because Android is 52% of the market. That 52% has their 
Bluetooth enabled 40% of the time. Does everybody get that? So 1.96 million phones in the United States, 52% of them are Android, and 40% of that market has their Bluetooth enabled. You want part of that market. Now, here's the exciting thing. Okay, I didn't have to do anything to my phone. I already had Google Chrome on my phone. I already had the notifications turned on on my phone, which a lot of people do. So you're still reaching out to that iPhone market, okay? But Android is the one that said, hey, Google, let's all bake this in, and we don't have to worry about all that download stuff and, and uh, all the barriers that are put in the way. And uh, so Google came out with the Eddie Stone in, in, in uh, 16, 2016. So what they did was is they basically told Apple, go ahead and play your game. Do what you do with your little eye beacon and all that because we're fixing to take the market away from you. And, and with this beacon technology, people are going to start looking at that. And as I said last week, and I've read this probably 10 or 15 times. Matter of fact, I read it on a site today. Uh, Apple is coming around very rapidly, okay, with all beacon technology that works for both Android and Apple. They, they're coming around very rapidly. We're going to see a change very, very soon with the Apple phone, especially as hot as beacon technology is starting to get. I, I, I encourage you. I encourage you. Uh, I don't know if Mike Cahill is on here tonight, but I can tell you this. Mike Cahill actually uh, encouraged me to study more, to learn more, to understand more, to read more. I'm a terrible reader. I've quit watching videos on the news because I like reading it. It has, it has stimulated my mind. Everything I'm teaching you, I have gone on Google and studied everything I've taught you. So you can learn this, and I encourage you to study and understand this market, okay? And if you do that, uh, if you will do that, you will be amazed at what it will do for your business. And when you're speaking intelligently about something, it makes you... Um, uh, I won't say prouder, but it it, it 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 boosts your, what word am I looking for, Kenny Dutton? It, it puts you in a place that you're in charge. I mean, you are the expert, okay? You are the expert. And so when I talk to people about beacons, I'm not ashamed, man, because I know a lot of, I don't know everything about beacons, but I know a lot about beacons. And you need to be the same way. You really need to be the same way. You need to know how they interact with your phones. You need to know how they interact with your apps. And I'm going to show you something in a minute. I'll tell you, I think I'll blow you guys out of the water here in about 20 minutes. I'm going to just knock your socks off what has been done uh, this last two days. But no matter whether you're using beacons indoors or in tough conditions, whatever you, you, your use case is, you can deliver it to most OS users, significantly in, in operating system users, that's what OS is, significantly increasing your app's reach and the ROI of proximity in your app. That, that, that is the most important thing that you can teach and educate your customers about, okay? The ROI of proximity in your app, return on investment. Everything they put into that app, the money that you just increased their reach to be able to help them to make more money with their app, to build their list, to grow their list, to bring more people into their business. That's what it's all about. And I can tell you, and I've seen it since I've started in the mobile app industry, people who have said, I don't want anything to do with websites. I don't want anything to do with mobile. I don't want anything to do with Facebook. I don't want anything to do with Instagram, Twitter. All these things that are hot, that are where people are, they're not making it. Businesses are shutting down every day because they will not bring their business into the 21st century. This right here is 21st century and beyond. 21st century and beyond. What should your campaign goal be? I, 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 I talked a little bit about this in the beginning. Your goal should be one thing. 
you are a mobile marketing expert you are an expert in whatever field your business is okay your mobile app is your area of dissemination to get information out to people in a rapid manner that's what a mobile app is used for it's not a website the rapid dissemination of information to people around that app and to people who use that app your number one goal for a campaign when you walk to these clients and i'm going to tell you right now going to be a five minute mobile business card sale so if you're thinking that you, you need to rethink your process okay you can go in and sell mobile business cards all day long in 10 minutes 10 minutes close the deal and walk out with a check all day long this is a different beast this is something people think is hot I, I loved the way Woodrow put it he said man this is this is sexy and it is I mean you could put a lips put lipstick on this and kiss it all day this is hot okay this is a sexy tech world right now that you're in with these beacons that absolutely is lighting the world on fire Eddie Stone lets you broadcast URLs that show up on devices that don't have your app installed. That's the whole reason for the mobile web app. People don't have to install it because they're going to take it off because they run out of space when they take too many pictures. There's two types of beacons we're looking at. The Eddie Stone URL, which is what we've been teaching this last two weeks. It literally broadcasts web addresses one right after the other five times a second. You can put it up seven times a second, eight times a second but one right after the other that gives you a new tool to encourage your visitors to get special offers through their apps. Now, I learned this this past week. or Yeah, last Thursday, as a matter of fact. I'm going to go out and test it again tomorrow. I went to a concert, and I was kind of disappointed, as I said, at the concert until I realized I'm sitting at a concert. People are having a very, very good time. They're dancing. They're enjoying the music. Uh, and I thought, you know, I don't even know if my beacons are transmitting or not. And every now and then I check my phone. Actually, I checked it more than I should have. And if they were transmitting, I thought, you know what? Nobody's going to look at my look at my uh, my beacons. And when I got home, man, there was a flood of people on there. Like 15 or 16 people looked at it. And by the next day, I think it was up to 35 or 40 people. I'd actually opened my app. See, they weren't there to look at their phone. But their notifications were there as they were leaving the concert and guess what happened they started clicking on that link what is this it said call carry <laughs> you know i mean people were literally opening my app and it, it wasn't a business it was uh it was an app that i was testing for beacons to go uh, uh another program that i'm working on to sell beacons and apps together so people were looking at that but they waited till the concert was over when you set these up in a store a lot of people are looking at their phones as they walk in the door and they're going to get those notifications and we're going to get an id okay where it's connected to specific apps at specific locations we're actually going to get into that next week and it may take two four weeks but we're going to go into the a stone uid how to configure it how to set it up how to walk through it how to do everything with the uh google dashboard okay you can use Eddie Stone to present your clients' visitors with a link to their mobile web app. Use the power of proximity. Using Eddie Stone URL, you can link to any page. Now, I want you to, I put it like that for one reason. I know somebody's going to say, well, we can't link to any page. Using Eddie Stone URL, you can link to any page of your choice so you can power up your business with proximity, even if you don't have your own native app. Since 84% of smartphone shoppers use their devices to help them shop while in a store, you can finally reach them and provide the content they expect. Yes, I did say any URL, you can link to any page of your choice. For example, if you're a restaurant, you may send a link to your own menu that shows up once someone enters your venue. Maybe you've got one of those lighting right outside the door, attached to the wall, okay, in an inconspicuous place so someone doesn't steal it, of course, and it's broadcasting the menu as people are walking down the streets. 
And as they smell the food and they turn that way and the menu pops up on their phone and it goes directly to that menu page, okay? Uh, or being a retailer, you may feature your current promotions. I highly recommend that as you talk to your clients, they not only do they need to say, hey, would you like to sign up for our uh, coupon texting program, okay? and put their phone number right there in their little app while they're sitting at that cash register <clears throat> or on their or on their computer they need to fill that information out they can also let them know hey just want to let you know that we have beacons in our store that have special deals all you need to do is check your notifications on your phone i'm going to tell you now everybody knows what notifications on their phone is whether you like them whether you don't whether you turn them off or whether you leave them on People know what notifications on their phones are. Why? Because we have been programmed to know what they are. That's why they come on your phone turned on. They force you to turn them off. Educate your customers how to utilize their beacons with their mobile web app to maximize sales and brand awareness. This is their brand that is being broadcast out to hundreds of people a day literally one right after the other as they're walking down the street maximize your clients reach don't just throw these in the store uh, i laughed uh, at at um mylon goins chris uh from the uk messaged me real late last night and uh he said hey i just got mylon goins uh url through my, through my phone via a beacon and uh, Mylon Goins had posted a picture in the group where he had put one inside of an electrical box, okay? Uh, that transmitter, he was making a joke, yeah, it goes up through the electrical lines and it gives it power, blah, blah, blah. But that's the whole key. Maximize your client's reach. Get the RX4 and find a nice place that you can stick it outside. Stick it behind their sign, okay? As you can see here, uh, there's one here by, by the sign. There's one here by the sign. Nobody's going to be able to take that down. Uh, there's one here above the door, okay, 40% uh, off. This is used to do one thing, drive people where? Into the app, into the store, into the marketing platform so you can reach them again and bring them back to the store where they open their phone, find the deals, continue to get their messages, and continue to spend money. I don't know about you guys, but as a business owner, it is all about the bottom line. If you're not making money, you don't stay in business very long. For example, here's a guy. Here's a beacon up here, up here on the uh, uh, electronics table, up here where the cameras are, and there's a couple of phones and stuff. Welcome to Dave's Electronic. 20% discount all tablets. Five times a second, blasting out. And he knows it's happening. He checked his uh, he checked his notifications, and he's going to get a twenty percent discount. Your clients need to make sure, and I cannot stress this enough. And and, and, and whether you make them signs, and you're going to say, "Well, Carrie, where do I get signs made?" Uh, make them up. Put put beacons here. Get a beacon symbol. Uh, turn your phone on. We have beacon specials today. Uh, get the notifications, uh, create them, make them, and everything will be perfect because people will start utilizing that phone, driving them to the app, getting them on their marketing list so that they can continue to drive those customers in. Use those beacons for specials. You shouldn't just walk in. I can't imagine walking in and selling one beacon to a store. I'm thinking four, three to four minimum. You know, uh, five maybe. You know, five maybe. So educate, 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 educate. That's what you're there for. How to use multiple beacons with multiple app pages. How, how many of you would like to walk into a store and you have... Blue jeans, you want to drive a page for the blue jeans. 
uh, maybe you've got ribeye steaks on special and you, you want to drive them to a ribeye steak page and you want to make sure but as they leave the building that you send out a, a link to your sign up page so that they can get in the marketing platform and maybe when they walk completely out the door and they're hit by that last beacon it sends them a hey thank you for shopping with us page and everything is driven back into the app and it's not just going to one simple page it's not going to just the front page it's going to whatever page that you want to put in those individual beacons and send those out as they go and let me just give you a little tease on next week's uh, next week's training how would you like to take one beacon and set it up from uh, say nine o'clock till eleven o'clock with breakfast and it sends out a URL with the breakfast menu and then from uh, eleven o'clock till two o'clock it sends out the lunch menu and then at five o'clock till close it sends out the dinner menu or any way you want to configure that and all you do is set up the times inside the UID transmitting the link to the phone with the call to action and it automatically changes guys that's how <clears throat> how powerful this technology is so if you would like to see how to set up your individual links from your web from your web apps let me grab a drink here if i could is everybody excited about these apps well, I'm sorry. I had this thing scroll down. I didn't realize all these questions were coming by. We'll ask questions at the end, too. Okay. So we all know that the copy code is the key to life, right? You have to have the copy code. The copy code is ex an extension of the HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash two tap dot mobi forward slash seven C three four. This is your mobile apps URL for the beacon period okay now you can use shorteners you can use other things to do that uh, that's totally up to you I prefer I prefer using this and Google Analytics I have found that uh, when I use the URL shorteners uh, it's getting hit on the URL shortener and I may not get to hit on the Google Analytics so but uh, here you have your URL, okay? Now we're gonna go into the app. Now let's say that I wanna pull the URL from click here for more info so that they can subscribe to a list and get more info. I would simply take the AS to slash the copy code and this information right here, can everybody see this in the left corner over here? Can everybody see the uh, getdigi.mobi forward slash Susan Overton forward slash subscribe? I want to make sure everybody can see that. I know it's very small. If anybody could just comment and say, hey, yeah, I can see that just so I can, I can know that's out there. But what you want to do is, remember, this is the first part of the URL. This is the URL that you named. Now I need to come over and I need to take the extension of the URL. It's right down here in the corner. It's very small. Okay, some people can, some people can't. It's very small. But if you if you roll your your um, pointer over your your mouse over your link that will come up and it will tell you what it is okay or you can right click it and you can save it all right so what you want to do is use this is this is the uh, get digit forward slash Susan Overton up to this point there's a slash right here now you need to pull the extension okay off of this you need to take the subscribe off and just add the subscribe to the end and that will pull up that individual page so let's say that they're walking out okay they're walking out of the store and uh, you want them to uh, make sure that they subscribe in case they didn't on the inside this would be the last link that you would send out as they pass by the last beacon okay <clears throat> you may be able to see it a little better on this slide 
if you have a, I brought up a menu also so you can see a menu. If you, some of you use these menus a lot. It's the same thing. Okay, if we wanted to make sure that they had the contact us information, we wanted to make sure that they had our address. Uh, maybe we want, to, we want to make sure they send out the V card. Okay, you can pull off the V card. You cannot do phone numbers. Okay, and you cannot do share web app. The phone number and the share web app and the Facebook share works totally with the phone itself. Okay, these are not uh, URLs, standalone URLs. So what you do is you come down here to the contact us and it's got the uh, address is same thing. Get digi.mobi forward slash Susan Overton. That's the two tab dot mobi plus the copy code. Now we just pull over. Okay. The address. Okay. Now let's look at one more. This is a form. Okay. This is a form. So. We want them to, um, let's see, I'm trying to think which one of these was the form. Oh, looking to buy or sell, click here. Okay, this is a form. Now, if you'll notice, this has two separate extensions on it. Okay, form and a number. So here's the Susan Overton URL. Now we go forward slash form, forward slash the form number, which is 4954. Now you can take this URL and you can put them individually into your beacons to drive them to specific pages that you want them to go. Okay. Does anybody have any questions on that? I want to make sure that's clear. Uh, so everybody understands what I'm talking about, that you can open individual pages of the app now using the Eddie Stone URL and you'll be able to also do it with the UID that we go to it all on this part, setting up these individual URLs. Remember the copy code back is the name of the app. Everything after the name of the app with the forward slash. Okay. Your subdirectories, your subdirectories, you have to put that after the, the copy code. Yeah, very cool. <laughs> very cool. Mark, 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 finish this up today, as a matter of fact. Very, very cool. So the extension of these beacons are only growing. I, I've never been this excited about anything since 2012 when uh, I, I, I thought about the mobile business card. I'm telling you. I've never, this is one of the most exciting things I've ever come across. I looked at this too, it absolutely sucked. Uh, excuse my language on that, but that's just the bottom line, it sucked. And uh, with the when, the when Google took charge, they took charge and they made it powerful. They made it powerful. And it's only gonna get better. This is only gonna get better. And as this grows and goes, keep you updated. I'm on this like a duck on a June bug, trust me. When new stuff comes out, you'll know about it. This is the this is the dashboard. Okay, this is what we're going to go into next week. You're able to put a, a place associated with the beacon. You're able to set where the beacon is on the map. Uh, you give it a description. You can literally tell it uh, building the. <laughs> The, the, the cell is on the second floor, and I mean, it's just, this is mind-boggling right here. And we're going to go into this next week, and I'm going to show you how to use the dashboard. This is actually, this, I showed you the extra URL while I go on my apps. This is the, this is the, uh, this is the URL right here. Okay? And this, we'll be in this for a while. This is going to be a whole training. It's, it's, it's not complicated. And I'm going to do it to where all you got to do is go back and watch the training and, and just do it step by step. Uh, the training site, uh, I had a few people ask me right before training started. The training site that I'm building, that, that all you guys have uh, got a membership to, I'm a couple of days behind that because of the holidays and we lost electricity last weekend for, uh, for about two days. So, But we will be finishing that up this week. 
It's going to be kind of the same training, just broken down in smaller bits. And if you're a member of App Wizard Studio, you you get you get that. Okay. Any questions? I try not to slam so much into the night, but man, there's so much in it, so much into this. It's just mind-boggling. Any questions at all? How does everybody like this Facebook? thing <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not really sure what it's called all i know is i got a program on this side that transmits like a webinar so everybody like the uh the be live tv i will download the email we'll do it like you did last week but it takes a, a whole day to download this and render it for youtube okay it takes kind of a long time all right if there's no questions then, uh, awesome. Yeah, it works. It works better than that other thing we got. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so much, man. Uh, darken the page. Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> I mean, I could put, I could put filters over it, I guess. <laughs> Is yours real bright? You know, you can turn the uh, you can turn the uh, contrast and brightness down on your computer. Donald, I'll never let you down, buddy. <laughs> I'll never let you down. All right, I want to say th thank everybody once again for coming out. Um, Brenda, we tested your beacon <laughs> every which way to Sunday, and. Uh, Everything works on phones from here to South Carolina. So I would maybe go by uh, <laughs> T-Mobile or uh, whatever. I can't remember the name of your thing. But uh, no, he's not. But I would, uh, I would go by there and ask them why you're not getting those notifications. Could be something in the phone. I'm not sure. I know it works on iPhones and Androids on this end. Absolutely. All right. Everybody have a great night, and I'll see you next Wednesday. I'll be posting little things on Beacons all week long as I, as I learn, as I study, as I put together trainings. And uh, I will see everybody uh, next Wednesday. Absolutely, Brenda. That's what we're here for. Good night, everybody. <laughs>